Gremlin to Quinlan. I'm Keith Gosland. I'm Ann Charles. Welcome to All Things LGBTQ. It's Tuesday, August 24th. Uh, we'd like to remind you that we're recording in Montpelier, Vermont, which is unceded indigenous land. And now let's hear from Linda, who has some national headlines for us. Hi, everybody. So I have one nonprofit is attempting to help LGBTQ refugees fleeing Afghanistan. And Anne will say this is a national. Do you have this one? It's Rainbow Railroad? Yes, you have that one. Yeah. Well, then I'll let Anne talk about it. I know there are people in the United States that are part of this group, which is why I um, was talking about it. So I will scratch it and let Ann talk about it. And I'll mention Canada. Yes. This is why we met early. To go over <laughs> our story. So, so, so much for that idea. Yeah, I know, because I was going to talk about Canada apropos of uh, Rainbow Railroad also. Well, they, I'll leave it up to you then. Okay. Okay. And the teacher was accused <coughs> of saying <coughs> gay people are unwanted girls. They're, no, that gay people are, and unwanted girls cry rape. Current and former students at Morton High in Illinois are demanding that the teacher be removed. We'll have more on that. Um, female couple were shot to death in Utah campsite. More about that. Foes tried to sex shame him. We'll learn who that him is and what happened. Farmers erect a huge pride flag after a school bans LGBTQ and Black Lives Matters symbol. In West Hollywood, in a gay bar, the Abbey has filed a lawsuit. We'll give you more about that. Out Representative Mark Takano introduces a four-day work week legislation. He really wants to make, uh, and he's campaigning hard for it. He's the sponsor of the bill, and he's the first gay person of color in the legislature. Billie Jean King, the out trailblazer, talks about the epiphany she had at 12. So we'll talk more about her epiphany later. And a sad story about James Hormel, the first out gay U.S. ambassador has died. Um, and Eminem's 19-year-old child comes out as gender fluid and bisexual. Vandals replace pride flags with Confederate ones in Virginia at Virginia Tech. Elliot Page, who we know, and Mae Martin, which Ann and I have been watching a series with her in it um, called Feeling Good. Feeling Good. On Netflix. On Netflix. Um, and they were seen together in a restaurant, and they got matching tattoos. They've been friends for years. Who knows? <laughs> Catholic officials are on edge after reports of priests on Grinder. <laughs> As we talked about last a uh, couple of weeks ago about Jeffrey Burrill, uh, General Secretary of the U.S. Bishops, resigned over being on Grinder. So this left wing, this right wing group, is trying to find all the priests that are using Grinder and other social media. They want to expose them, um, and apparently they found a lot of people using Grinder inside the Vatican. So, are you surprised? I have a Grinder story too. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor of an Alabama city is openly considering directing LGBTQ-friendly businesses to find other cities to, to uh, do business, as their city council failed to pass a non-discrimination ordinance. The mayor of Montgomery, Stephen Reed, pledged he would tell businesses that don't want to discriminate that this is the wrong city for them. The, ordi the ordinance lost by one vote. And then we have the last story about the Lesbian Project in, is raising money to help support 
lesbian bars during the COVID-19 pandemic. So, Keith, what do you got? Because we all need a place to go. <laughs> so, water theme. Thinking of the 20th anniversary of Tropical Store and Irene in Henri that just happened. Henri. Water won't run straight and neither will we. Kind of pithy. <laughs> Where did I find it? So I'm going to talk in this section a bit about the events that are coming up. And the first series of events are sponsored by Vermont Cares. And we had their outreach worker on a recent interview show yes. talking about all of the programs and all of the expansion and community involvement that they're looking at doing. So on Tuesday, August 31st, it's statewide, but at their new office in Barrie, this is going to be Overdose Awareness Day. Hmm. And one of the things about Vermont Cares is they are one of the few needle exchange programs in the state of Vermont. You know, you give me a dirty needle, I give you a clean needle, no questions asked. They're also going to be offering HIV testing. Do they do that around the state? They do it around the state. They have a van that they also go okay. and set up locations. They'll be at the Pride Day Festival in Burlington in September doing HIV testing, et cetera. And Linda's favorite event on September 3rd, because it's first Friday, Get out your bicycle, come to the <laughs> Kellogg Hubbard at 6 o'clock for the Queer Critical Mass bike ride. Not until I get my electric bike. I, the, I'm taking her next week. <laughs> and on Sunday the 12th of September. Before or after brunch? <laughs> no, this is Sunday the 12th. Oh. After, no, this is a couple of weeks All from right. now. Okay. They're doing a Queer Causeway ride in Burlington. Meet at 11 o'clock at Letty Park. So sponsored by Queer Connect, and they are trying to start an ongoing series of drag bingo. Now, it used to happen in Burlington. They have stopped doing it. Well, Queer Connect is picking it up, and I need a cocktail. <laughs> and the troupe from Merchants Hall in Rutland are going to be the hosts. You know, imagine calling out those numbers. <laughs> Check their Facebook page for specific dates, locations, etc. But also on Saturday, September 11th at Merchants Hall, it's a hootenanny. I love those. Anita Cocktail and oh. friends will be doing their first drag show back at Merchants Hall. And you can go onto the Merchants Hall Facebook page to get all of the details. It starts at 7 o'clock. There is an admission fee. They say 21 and older, and the reason for that is they allow alcohol on the premises. Mm -hmm. So it just makes things simpler. Keep in mind that out in the open in Brattleboro continues to do their radio hour. They're also sponsoring a weekly event of Rural Queer Crafternoons. Mm -hmm. Bring your favorite craft socialize and teach someone how to knit. They're also doing an, ex an outreach to create an intersectional health justice project, looking at what are the inequities within our services, how do we approach it, how do we advocate, et cetera. Uh, Pride Center of Vermont, Monday, August 30th, this is going to be online, so you need to go to their website to register a singular they. And this is going to be Toby McNaught's performance piece. And Toby bills themselves as a queer, non-binary, trans, disabled, multidisciplinary artist. Now, this is for free, but they need to register so they can get, you know, how many people are going to be watching. And there's going to be a question and, ask, question and answer afterward. Toby is also part of an exhibit at the Shelburne Museum called New England Now People. And part of their promotion is that the exhibit is intended to provoke and facilitate critical and timely discussions centered on the topics of identity, equity, and inclusion in a way that challenges visitors' assumptions 
and opens conversation that may at times be difficult. And Toby's was filmed performing and there are several different pieces and you can sit and watch. Mm -hmm. There was also the exhibit, the photo exhibit of the Rainbow Cattle Company, sure. mm -hmm. which was a drag show that was based in Brattleboro at Colors Bars for years. And it is fabulous sort of behind the scenes preparing to go out and do drag and then some of the Anne drag and I shows. Are making plans now to go. <laughs> and this exhibit is open at the Shelburne through October 17th, which is when the museum closes and is at the Pizza Galley Center for the Arts and Education. Also on Thursday, September 2nd and Friday, September 3rd, it's a two-day event starting at 10 o'clock, which I know is after some people's bedtimes, mm -hmm. at Einstein's Tap Room is the amateur drag competition and show. There will be prizes given, and this will be hosted by Emoji Nightmare. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday, September 5th, starting at 1230 South End of Church Street, is the Pride Parade. This year, there are no grand marshals. There are, there is no theme. And as I was told today, the Vermont State Police Fair and Impartial Policing Program was told that they are not invited nor welcomed to march in the parade this year. Following the parade, there will be their usual festival in Battery Park. Who's speaking? Do we have any idea about who's? No? Okay. I mean, I did not get an indication of any speakers, and I did not see a performer's list. Okay. And, but if there are no grand marshals, they're usually, those are usually the speakers. Okay, so they'll probably have others or none or whatever. But C A W C A X Channel 3, starting at 3 in the afternoon, will be telecasting and showing you know, what they had filmed of the Pride Parade. And then that will be it for now because I... I have a, an event to add to the calendar. It's All right. A little bit in the future, September 23rd. Uh, because Art, a book launch party for our oh. friend John Kalecki. Kalecki. Because Art is the name of his wonderful new vol volume. The subtitle is Commentary, Critique, and conversation, it's going to be 7 o'clock, Thursday, September 23rd at the Pride Center of Vermont. And this is an in-person event? I believe so. Okay. 28 people are going, including me. All right. Okay. Um, Thank you. Time for me to do Absolutely. Well, I knew you had a lot. I have quite a few. Um, in the world category, <laughs> majorities of 10 countries support trans non-discrimination protections. And um, I'm not gonna share the list right now, but the moral of the story is the more trans people one knows, the less discrimination occurs, which is kind of a truism about you know, LGBT, LGB life also. Um, let's go to our continental divide, so to speak. <laughs> in South America, I have two short stories. One involves Alexa Salvador, Brazil's first trans pastor, and she's blazing a trial for LGBT plus inclusion. Uh, I have a picture before you now. Like many of us, she started out in the Catholic Church moved to the MCC church, which is where I have parted ways with her. Um, but self, she's making history in the world's deadliest countries for trans, one of the world's deadliest countries for trans people. Um, she became disillusioned with Catholicism for fairly obvious reasons uh, and moved to the MCC, as I said. Um, is the MCC part of the Catholic Church? Or no, 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 no. It's a whole different denomination. Metropolitan Community Church. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's uh, the violent climate impacting trans people in Brazil. Um, as I said, it claims the world's highest rate of homicides 
Uh, at least 124 trans Brazilians were murdered in 2020, a 70% increase over 2019. Um, it eclipsed the country with the second most trans murders, Mexico, by nearly 100 deaths. Um, she is part of what some people say is progress uh, in Brazil. In the country's local elections last November, 48 LGBTQ city plus city council members were elected, including 25 trans people. So I'm hoping this is part of a trend. Um, it may be uh, there's legislation in the works to mandate 3% um, of jobs for trans people, but that, has, that legislation has been tabled. Now I have another picture before you of um, Twinkle Kassoon and Quincy Gulliver McEwen, who are founder and executive director of Guyana Trans United. And they are pictured before you because the Guyana National Assembly has finally removed <coughs> cross-dressing um, as an offense. The criminal court, the Caribbean criminal court decision um, was passed and now Guyana is finally complying oh. under the, um, after the activism of these two figures pictured before you. Um, to now, I only have one African story and I'm afraid it's sort of a repeat about what's going on in Ghana. They have uh, this very draconian law in the works, but now the UN has taken a stand against it. They condemned Ghana um, saying that this draft legislation is part of a system of state-sponsored discrimination and violence. Um, it's, it creates a res recipe for conflict and violence. Uh, and one thing I haven't mentioned about this bill, it includes a bill that lessens punishment um, against LGBT people if they agree to go to conversion therapy, which everyone agrees is a form of torture. But so the UN has taken a stand against this bill and that's good news. Um, now I have a whole series of stories from Asia, a lot of them kind of discouraging. One, the World Cup has um, chosen Qatar to uh, host it this year. And Qatar uh, has agreed to raise the rainbow flag. It's given people permission to raise the rainbow flag, even though Qataris say life in the country is horrible. And they're gonna pull out all the stops for all the tourists. Apparently 90% of the people who live in Qatar are foreigners. Um, but it's discriminatory wow. policies towards the LGBTQ community are now coming to light because it's in the national. I wonder the, if they're from the from that area, Middle East. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's listed among many of the several Middle Eastern countries that criminalize same-sex relations. Okay. Um, Countries are urged to offer refuge to LGBTQ Afghans. Um, LGBTQ plus Afghans have uh, suffered routine discrimination, abuse and persecution, including by the state. Um, media reports that a Taliban judge last month said the group would execute gay people if it once again governed Afghanistan, and now it has. And this judge apparently said there are two penalties for being LGBTQ, um, either stoning or being crushed by a wall. That's and, what I read, that they were gonna, that if they caught uh, uh, gay men, they would crush them. Mm -hmm. And he uh, outlined the dimensions of the wall and so forth. Um, Kamali Powell is executive director of Rainbow Railroad, which is a Toronto-based organization that assists LGBTQ 
refugees around the world. And Keith is probably going to want to chime in about this because they're uh, based in Canada. Uh, Mr. Powell says, although it remains to be seen how the Cal Taliban will respond, uh, the signs are not encouraging. I was going to say that the chime in is that specifically for Newfoundland and Labrador, they're working with the Rainbow Refugee Association of Nova Scotia to create Welcome Rainbow, where they're going to be going doing outreach to provide training and orientation for new Canadians. Mm -hmm. So they're That's they're exciting. already putting things in place, and and also keep in mind, Vermont has said to the federal government, we we are ready and we would like your refugees here. But so. nobody's talking. About except for Rainbow Railroad, specifically about LGBTQ yeah. refugees, and Biden hasn't mentioned them either. And the how-to of mm -hmm. you know, what it is going to take to create an environment that is truly welcoming and what is the process for inclusion. And how to get them out of the country there seems you know. to be the most pressing. And yep. you know, there seems like they're leaving it up to people to get to the airport by themselves. I mean... You know, it's very dicey, yeah. all of it. Okay. So, um, let's move on to another story involving Russia, which I'm counting as Asia in this segment. Uh, a picture book fighting back back against Russia's LGBTQ propaganda law has appeared. It's a story for children about families with same-sex parents. It's been published in Russia as part of a campaign to have the country's gay propaganda law repealed. Uh, Bedtime, Not Playtime by Lawrence Shamil, uh, illustrated by Elena Brasina, is the title of one of the books. A month after a Hungarian bookshop was fined for selling the children's story about the day in the life of, the child, of a child with same-sex parents, the same Picture book has been published in Russia. Unfortunately, there's an 18 plus label on it in <laughs> deference to the country's gay propaganda it's a law. It's children's book, right? Mm -hmm. um, tells about a morning and an evening <laughs> in the lives of two children with same sex parents. It's published as two titles in English. Early, early one morning, about a young boy's morning with his two gay mothers, and bedtime not playtime, which follows a girl with two follow fathers at bedtime. The Russian translation combines the title of both books under the title Mothers, Fathers, and Kids from Dusk Till Dawn. Um, unconventionally, the book has been published by Sphere, which is a charitable foundation rather than a traditional publishing house for obvious reasons. Um, so Sphere, has published, um, it was released in Hungary last month, uh, and the bookstore that, you it's know. It's hitting all the good places. Yes. Started to sell it, was <laughs> yeah. fined 200, um, 600 pounds by a local authority for um, failing to clarify that it contains content that deviates from the norm. It's launched a, launched a campaign to have the propaganda law repealed in Russia. Um, this book is the epitome of the law's absurdity, they said in a statement. This does not protect anyone from anything. Rather, it acts as an instrument of limiting access to information. Um, it's printed 500 copies and sent them to LGBT organizations and queer influences, influencers hopes to publish more in the future. So um, it's been published in 24 languages, so let's hope it gets some circulation. One more, uh, another Asian story concerns the Taiwan-Macau gay couple who wed after a landmark legal win, and here's their picture. They're Ting Zi Yen and his partner Luang Chin Fei. Uh, Luang is from Macau. They fought this for years, and finally, this one-time marriage was granted. So anybody else who wants to do it is going to have to go through the same 
legal proceeding. One time marriage? Mm -hmm. Oh, this, we'll do it this once, but not for everybody. The couple have co founded a group mm -hmm. to help more than 100 Taiwanese whose partners are from countries where same sex marriage is not legal, including China, Japan, Thailand, and Vietnam, because the law is that, you know, they, Taiwan, which is very forward-looking as an Asian country in terms of LGBT concerns, uh, has mandated that if you can only marry someone from another country who, where same-sex marriage is legalized. And why did they do that, do you think? I mean, what's the thought behind that? They don't want, like, people They probably don't want international... To bring them to... I think they probably don't want international repercussions yeah, okay. from places like China and um, Japan and so forth. Um, I have one more Asian headline uh, concerning Israel. An Israeli court has ruled that um, you can't sue your partner if they hide their sexual orientation from you. Um, a woman filed a $5 million shekel came claim against her former husband, citing emotional distress. That uh, she was suing him for $1,553,500 80, I'm sorry, $1,553,581.45. Um, they married for a decade. The couple divorced five years ago. They have three daughters. Um, she claimed that her husband with her uh, introduced himself to the family as a heterosexual and religiously observant man. but it was revealed that he was a homosexual. The family court, court initially dismissed the lawsuit, but then uh, it was appealed, and the Jerusalem District Court said that it was grounds for a lawsuit. The Supreme Court said, no, 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 you can't sue your partner for hiding their feelings. So that's it for uh, Asian news. I have more from Europe and a clip from Australia, but I think we should move to Linda now. Okay. Well, we have a teacher in Morton High in Illinois uh, who says that um, gay people are gay because they're unwanted, and unwanted girls are the girls who cry rape. So students, both past and present, are demanding she be removed. They say she routinely insults LGBTQ people and says that people become gay because they are unwanted children and girls just like to cry, call rape. Protesters also say that the school district's administrators are also at fault, citing the board members who made transphobic comments on Facebook. Board, board member Bert Rickenberger recently made uh, anti-trans comments on Facebook. Protesters want him removed as well. They say the board is run by religious white guys. So Could be. <laughs> Sounds about right. Mm. And uh, sadly, a female couple were shot to death in Utah campsite. And <coughs> I thought I saw a little more of an article today that they had found their bodies in Utah. But Crystal Turner and Kyleen Schulte told a friend there was a weirdo camping near them and it was freaking them out. They lived in Moab, Utah. They were last seen at a tavern Saturday night and were planning to move to another campsite. The police are investigating. And here's a photo of the two women who were murdered. Foes tried to sex shame him, but Representative Roger Montagna got the last laugh. Montagna is proud gay man with HIV. He survived bullying, homophobia, and nasty political campaign to emerge as one of the nation's inspiring leader. 
He is beyond humbled, he says, as having been elected to the New Mexico State Legislature. And then farmers erect this huge pride flag after school bans LGBTQ and Black Lives Matter symbols. An Oregon couple saying displaying support for queer and Black Lives Matter is not a political act. After the school board in Newburgh, Oregon banned the flags, Erin and J. Bill McCarthy, who have a farm near the school, built their own. People donated money <coughs> and for materials from around the state and helped erect this very large pride flag on a hill. So that was a good story. And then this really weird story. They didn't name the comedian in this article. I don't know who they are, but they're accusing um, the Abbey Bar in West Hollywood saying on social media and elsewhere that they were drugged by the bartender while they were there. Camera footage says she wasn't telling the truth. There was no indication <coughs> of the bartender doing anything or her being in proximity to the bartender, I guess. Um, <coughs> but so the Abbey is suing for deformation, deformation, trade libel, and breach of contract. And they're suing for $5 million. So I wish I knew who the comedian was, but they didn't say. <clears throat> Billie Jean King came out as a trailblazer, talks about the epiphany she had at 12, 12 years old that changed her life. At a tennis lesson, she knew she wanted to be the number one player in the world. She went on to win 39 Grand Slam, career Grand Slam titles, and in the process changed sports for women. 50 million women around the world watched her defeat Bobby Riggs in 1973. I remember that so well. In a battle of the sexes. I remember being glued to I the TV mm -hmm. um, during that. And I don't know how many, you know, how many people, you know, uh, know about Billie Jean King, but um, she did a wonderful work by starting women's tennis um, mm -hmm. and demanding more money, which, you know, brought women's sports up in the world. But that Bobby Riggs thing was I just amazing. The Battle of the Sexes. And there's the, also a movie out about her. I can't was, remember the name, called. but Battle it's of very, the Sexes. It's yeah. Battle of the Sexes. Mm -hmm. Great movie and mm -hmm. fun to watch. And on a sad note, James Hormel, the first out gay U.S. ambassador, has died. He was 88. He was an activist and philanthropist, and he saw a great pushback against his nomination as ambassador. Bill Clinton nominated him to Luxembourg in 1999 in a sneak session of Congress. After years, he finally was appointed. He funded the Gay and Lesbian Center at the San Francisco Public Library and also worked for the Human Rights Campaign. He will be very much missed. And on my uh, last note here, the Lesbian Bar Project is raising money to help support lesbian bars during COVID-19. <clears throat> they say without space, we lose power, validity, and community safety <clears throat> and intergenerational dialogue. There are only 21 lesbian bars left. In the 80s, there were 200. You can see the list of bars that are accepting donations on their website, and it's called the Lesbian Bar Project. And I have heard from <coughs> sources that this is partly driven by Leia Delaria, right? Leia Delaria. Who, uh, as you know, was in uh, Orange is the New Black. And she bought the um, Pied Piper in New Orleans, I mean in, Provincetown. Provincetown, which 
you know, I used to go to an awful lot. Many of us did. Yes. And uh, you couldn't go. Sorry. Hmm. Um, but I think it's called The Club now. And it's going to have food, drink, and entertainment. Is that right, Ann? Mm -hmm. So there we go. Keith, what do you have for us? So really quickly, the Tokyo Summer Paralympics are about to start. They are estimating 30 out LGBTQ plus athletes. Nine of those are from the U.S., most notably the women's basketball team. <laughs> We're expecting big things. Nine are from the, there are nine out athletes from the U.K., three from Canada. By comparison, there were only 12 out athletes at the 2016 Summer Games in Rio. Canada, their Senate has just voted Bill C-6, which would be legislation prohibiting conversion therapy related conduct, and it creates offenses that a court could charge somebody if they caused a person to undergo conversion therapy without the person's consent. Does that include children? Caused a child to undergo conversion okay. therapy. You get ahead of yourself. All right. Do anything for purpose of removing a child from Canada for the intention to undergo conversion therapy. Promote or advertise an offer to provide conversion therapy oh. or receiving financial or other material benefit from the provision of conversion therapy. Now, the court can also seize all the advertisement, including computer systems or anything on the internet. Mm. Where, I mean, this would be the most comprehensive. However, there is a caveat that it doesn't penalize a consenting adult if no money or material benefit is received from going out and looking for or engaging in a conversation <coughs> about, I don't know what to do with these feelings about sexual orientation, gender identity, attraction, and this is where I could go to my leader of faith and say, I want counseling, and the leader of faith would not be prosecuted. As long as there's no money changes hands. No money is changing hands, okay. and it's a consenting adult. I would have to initiate. It's not that the church would offer. So a psychiatrist or a therapist wouldn't do it because they wouldn't get paid. Well, and actually, there are some of the providence, provinces in Canada which says this is not a billable expense on your health care. Looking at HIV and AIDS really quickly, Moderna has started their human trials for an HIV vaccine. And from talking with people within the healthcare community, the work that was done for the COVID vaccine truly benefited from the work that had already been started for HIV and the success of the COVID vaccine has accelerated the HIV vaccine process. So they have already started with 56 HIV negative participants. They are very encouraged by what they're finding. Related, Tory Cooper was just appointed to the President's Council on HIV. What is of note, Terry Cooper is a trans black woman. And one of the statistics that I keep forgetting is black trans women, 62% are living with HIV. Tori or Terry? Tori. Tori. Latina trans women, 25% are living with HIV as opposed to 17% of white trans women. Israel is lifting all of its restrictions on men who have sex with men doing blood, tissue, and organ donations, you will be held to the same standard as everyone else. And I will be talking more about this in an upcoming episode because I'm going to reach out to Vermont Cares to see what they're doing for advocacy because in the U.S. it is still, you know, you cannot have had sex with another man within three months. And there are some countries, such as Ann and I were talking about, 
that if you're, such as Northern Ireland, that if you're in a mutually monogamous relationship longer than three months, you are a suitable donor. Um, Maine, the Orno Pride ostrich has been stolen. <laughs> oh no. <gasps> the ostrich had toured the state at Pride festivals. It was part of a Pride zoo. They I hope are saying, happened to them. well, they're saying you return it, no questions will be asked. <coughs> Massachusetts, and we really need to give them some acknowledgement. Harvard Law School has two new faculty. They are two trans women of color. They both identify as being Latina. Anya Marina, who will be teaching LGBTQ plus advocacy, and Alejandro Caraballo, who will be teaching cyber law. Oh. Now that's the one I want to. And finally, Outright Vermont. They needed to raise $850,000 to be able to purchase the building in which they are housed. They have raised $886,000. Amazing. So good going. Yes. So I, I know you got a lot there. I sure do. Let's start with Scotland which tells teachers to respect the gender identities of trans kids. And what I found particularly interesting about this story is they're distancing themselves from, Eng from the UK, which apparently has an increasingly transphobic profile. Um, I know that's really gotten off the ground, that. Yeah. Um, J.K. Rollins. Yeah. This institutional transphobia uh, the um, Minister for Women and Equalities in the UK announced that the government's LGBT advisory panel would be dissolved. And this is sort of a growing trend, apparently. It mirrors a rise in public transphobic statement uh, sentiment in the UK, uh, which was reported earlier this year. Um, Scotland's mandates... Um, include LGBTQ education, which was the first mandate in the world. Um, what they say is that uh, trans children, trans young people experience the most bullying in school. Yeah. So they're stepping in and trying to interrupt that in Scotland. So I don't know why they don't leave England. Didn't they have a vote uh -huh, on that? Well, right? yeah. that's not up to us to decide, oh, no. I suppose. Um, <laughs> let me show you a picture now of the thousands marching for LGBTQ rights in Romania amid a push for Hungary-style propaganda ban. Now, this article, and I'm going to go with it, says that uh, even though it's in the air that a, Trump, that a propaganda ban might occur in Romania, there's so much activism against it, uh, it has 19 million people, it decriminalized homosexuality and has revised its criminal code to ban discrimination on the basis of LGBTQ plus identity. Same-sex unions remain illegal uh, despite the 2019 referendum about it that was defeated the, uh, a majority of Romanians oppose marriage equality, yet they're fighting, and thousands have marched in this rally to demand equality uh, as, uh, as this was Bucharest Pride on Saturday. So, um, Good for them. yes, they're holding out. Turkey, which I'm counting as Europe. Um, this isn't a story involving um, Grindr. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it, actually, the Grindr story is coming up. But um, Apple has removed the dating gay application Hornet from its app store in Turkey um, after a court order claimed that personal rights of the Ankara Provisional Gendarmerie Command were violated. Uh, it has more than 3 million users in Turkey. Um, 
it had Turkey has previously blocked Hornet's website, um, and the decision. An activist said, we are seeing what's taking place in Turkey, a gradual erosion of free speech, uh, consistently queerphobic language, um, physical brutality in the streets. This is what the Hornet founder says. It says it's now in the process of taking up legal counsel. In 2013, Turkey blocked Grindr. The government, without any court decision has also periodically blocked every website that contains the word gay in its link, including networking and pornographic websites. Since 2014, Traka, Ankara has also forcibly banned the Istanbul Gay Pride Parade. Senior Turkish officials have intensified their rhetoric against LGBTQ citizens, um, calling them deviants and perverted. Um, a law professor says that uh, Hornet didn't necessarily have to remove, uh, Apple didn't necessarily have to remove Hornet, but um, they chose to. You could still get Hornet if you're interested and you're <laughs> Turkish on uh, Google Play's app, which is used on Android based smartphones. Um, these sorts of court judgments are blunt and problematic. Previous ones have seen have been seen on YouTube, Twitter, and Wikipedia that were blocked in Turkey. And I just heard today that Turkey has built a wall with Iran, uh -huh. like, you know, to keep Afghans from entering because they have too many Syrians now. And you know, like if you're a foreigner, I think in Turkey. If you have a license, it says that you're a foreigner on it, you know, so. I have two more. Uh, We're almost out of time, Ian, so okay. we need to. This, um, let's take a look at the great B British Bake Off alum <laughs> who got banned from Griner, Griner for impersonating himself. His oh, name I is heard Michael about that. Michael yeah. Chakaverti. There's his picture. <laughs> yeah, he went on Grinder. They said, "No, no, you have to prove your identity," and it's happened to other um, <laughs> stars. celebrities. One more picture: these two Paralympians started dating during COVID. Now they're heading for Tokyo. Their names are Jude Hammer and Lauren Rolls, and they're both British. Um, so, may I just talk about this clip I have from this Australian All film? All right, but you better be quick. All right. <laughs> Ellie and Abby and Ellie's dead aunt is a 2020 Australian LGBTQ romance comedy written and distributed um, <coughs> by Monica Zanetti after the uh, 2016 stage play. It, it had its world premiere at the Mardi Gras Film Festival in 2020. Um, the synopsis. 17-year-old Ellie comes out to her mother in a very blunt manner, and her mother is stunned by her daughter's out-and-proud attitude. Ellie wants to ask her classmate Abby to the formal, but is reluctant and nervous about doing so. On her journey of summoning the courage to ask Abby out, or the alternative being rejected, she gets advice from her living Aunt Patty and it is also being advised by her deceased Aunt Tara, an LGBTQ rights activist who died in the 1980s. Aunt Tara doesn't want to be called a ghost, though, but rather a fairy godmother. Oh. Let's look at the clip. I'm putting it out into the universe that I did not just like a post from six months ago. <sighs> Still in school, Captain? Nothing, just going to class. It's <laughs> lunch. Yeah. I'm asking a girl in my class to the formal. I'm gay. You're such a bigot. <sighs> that went really well. How would you feel if a strange woman showed up in your bathroom claiming to be your dead aunt? Let's bring it in. 
coming out is hard and I have been sent here to help you through it. Look at our grandchildren. Oh, come on, shut up. Here is a list of conversation topics. You're making this a big deal and it's no big deal. What is on this note? I, it's, what? Can't, I, it, don't be such a... Nope. Oh, this is ridiculous. We used to talk about everything. So your mum has never told you about how you die? I get this is all really new and exciting for you, but it's not for me. What did you say this story was like? A car crash that you couldn't look away from. All you have done is make me feel different. Different is wonderful. Shut up! You might not be at that age yet where you realise your parents are just human. The tension, huh? Into bad girls, are you? I'd like to pretend you never said that. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> I like you. It feels really weird to say that out loud. What you doing? Just checking we're alone. Who could be watching? Oh, just my family. Wait, what? No, no, no. That's now I, I could watch that where? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the problem. It's oh. premiering at film festivals okay. now going around, but it's not immediately available. Thank you for asking, though. Yeah, that's yeah. An so important at some point, point, maybe we'll be able to... Keep your eyes out for There'll be an audience. update. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes. water won't run straight, and neither will we. Kind of punchy. June 1983 might have been Vermont's first gay... Pride theme. And I don't think we've changed a bit. No, I know I haven't. So with that... Well, yes, is that it, Ian, for you? Well, I'd like to go back and I feel like I've given short shrift to the Paralympians. Well, um, we have about two minutes. All right, well then, look at their picture and root for them in the Paralympics. <laughs> On that note... Resist.